Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from Nulungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this, and a big shout out to our subscribers. Thank you for 18,000 subscribers. I hope you guys are doing alright, and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to the story of Basisa the Renegade. I hope I said that right. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Basisa was a monk and he was a pious worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, Barsisa was from Banu Israel and he had his own temple and he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. And some narrations talk about him, you know, worshiping Allah for about 60 years. One day, three brothers, they decided to go on jihad. They, they wanted to go on a long expedition. They had one problem. They had a sister. And this sister, they didn't know what to do with her. Who's going to look after their sister while they're away? So they, you know, sought counsel with one another. They decided who better to leave their sister with than this great monk, this great worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this pious person by the name of Barsisa. So they went to Barsisa and they said, listen, Barsisa, we want to go and perform jihad. We want to go away and do, you know, to, on this long expedition. And we want you, Barsisa, to look after our sister. Now immediately, Barsisa says, A'udhu Billah, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't want any form of temptation or any kind of fitna. And so the brothers walked away. Then Shaytan came to Barsisa and said, listen, Barsisa, you know, you're a pious person. You're, you're the most pious person in town. If you don't look after their sister, then maybe somebody else will, will and maybe they'll do something bad with her they won't look after her well, they won't treat her well, and maybe she will be a temptation for them. So Shaitan came to him, came to Barsisa in this way. So Barsisa went to these three brothers and he basically said to them, listen, I'll agree, I will look after your sister. However, she will stay in a room that is specifically, you know, next to the temple where I worship Allah subhanahu wa They bid farewell to their sister. And Barsisa would basically look after their sister and she would stay in, in the room next to the temple. Barsisa would never enter that room. So he would cook some food for her and he would leave it outside his own house or at the temple. And so she would come outside, she would take the food and then go back into her room. And then, you know, and this happened for a while. And then eventually Shaitan came to Barsisa and said, listen, you know, this poor woman, she's coming outside of her house in order to get this food. What, what are you doing, uh, Barsisa? You should at least take the food to her so she doesn't have to come outside. You know, she's a beautiful woman. Maybe someone will see her and maybe they will do some kind of harm to her. He, Barsisa, eventually, he went, he started taking the food to this woman's house. And he would leave the food outside the house of this woman, outside the room of this woman knock on the door and then he would disappear and as such the woman would come out take the food and go back in and this happened for a long time if you remember the brothers of this sister they'd gone away on jihad on this long expedition and they hadn't yet returned so this happened for a long time eventually shaitan came to barsisa and says look she's still coming outside she's all alone she's going to come out of her room and what's going to happen you know, maybe someone will see her, she's a beautiful woman, and perhaps, you know, they will do some harm to her. So Barsisa said, okay, look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside the house, leave the food there and come out. I won't say a word. So he started to do that. He'd knock on the door, she would open the door, and then he would leave the food inside of her house. And this happened for a long time. He would not utter a word, and she would not utter a, a word. Then as time went on, Shaitan came back to Barsisa and says, listen, Barsisa, this poor woman, she's by herself. She's going to go mad. Her brothers have gone for a long time. She, she doesn't go out much. You know, she, she doesn't have anybody to speak to. 
you should at least ask how she is. So Barsisa initially started to talk to her from outside of the door. So he'd go and leave the food, come out and speak to her from behind the curtain. And you know, if, as time went on, slowly, slowly, the chats became longer, it became a bit more informal, and he began to enjoy her company. So Shaitan came to him once again and says, you know, what's the problem? Just go in, have a little chat. You're a pious person. And so he started to go in and visit this woman. And as time went on, the chats became longer. He would end up spending, you know, the night in her house. And eventually they fell into zina. This great monk, this great worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person who, would, who engaged 60 years of his life in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and he was a pious man. Eventually, shaitan tricks him and eventually he falls into zina. She gets pregnant, she gives birth to a child and still her brothers haven't returned. So shaitan came to Barsisa and says, listen, Barsisa, you know, what, what's going to happen when these brothers come back and they see that you've committed zina with this woman? You better, you better kill this child. You better murder this child. So Barsisa goes away and he murders this child. And as time goes on, Shaitan comes back to him and says, Barsisa, are you crazy? You know, what are you doing? Look at this woman. Do you really think she, you've just killed her child? Do you really think she's going to keep quiet? She's not going to keep quiet. She's going to inform people that you've murdered her child. She has this love for her child. So Barsisa, he asked, what should I do? Shaitan said to him that, listen, you need to murder this woman and bury her and people will believe you. Just say that she fell sick and he died and you buried her. And this is precisely what Barsisa did. He murdered this woman. Eventually, the three brothers come back. They come to Barsisa, you know, asking about their sister. And Barsisa says, listen, I'm really sorry, but your sister, she fell ill and she died. And so the brothers, they believe Barsisa. Barsisa was a pious man as far as they're concerned. He was a monk. He's been worshipping Allah for 60 years. So they go back home and then they go to sleep. And that night, one of them had a dream. He woke up in the morning and he said, listen, I had a really strange dream. I had a dream that the place where Barsisa told us where our sister is buried. In fact, she wasn't. She's not buried there. She's buried in another place. And actually, he had committed zina. She had a child and he murdered both the mother and the child. And in fact, this is what Barsisa has done. So the other brother, another brother, he says, you know what? Subhanallah, this is exactly the same dream that I had. So they, they also had this same dream. So they went to the place where and actually some narrations say that it was shaitan who came to them in this vision in this dream and told them look how shaitan works so they went to the place where in their dream they saw that barsisa had buried their sister and and lo and behold they dug it up and they saw their sister there buried along with a baby so they go back to barsisa and said barsisa you lied to us this is actually what you did we're going to take you now to the ruler and you're going to be punished now, Barsisa is really upset. He's anxious. What does he do? What should a person do at this point? He should make tawbah to Allah. He should repent to Allah. Barsisa, he did not do this. And eventually, he has been, you know, they're going to crucify Barsisa. They're going to execute him for this great crime. So what do they do? On the way, as they're going to crucify him, and some narrations say he was actually on the cross. They're about to crucify him. They're about to execute him for this crime. And what happens? Shaitan comes to him now in the form of a man. And he says, Barsisa, do you know who I am? And Barsisa says, no. He says, I am Shaitan. I'm Iblis. And I'm the one who got you into this mess in the first place. And I'm the only one who can get you out of this mess. So Barsisa, what I want you to do is to prostrate to me a prostration of worship. If you do this, then I will get you out of this mess. So Barsisa says, I'll do anything to get out of this mess. So he prostrates to Iblis. He prostrates to him as an act of ibadah to shaitan. So when he prostrates, shaitan disappears. 
and they crucified Barsisa. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Here was a, a monk. Here was a person who's a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does he do? Slowly, slowly, shaitan gets to him. He doesn't tell him straight away, commit zina. But no, he just, and eventually this man falls into zina. Not only does he fall into zina, but because he does not repent to Allah, he then goes on to murder this, you know, two people, his own child and this woman. He murders these two people. And then he lies about it. And then he finally he prostrates as an act of worship to shaitan. And that is when he dies. All 60 years of his worship wasted. He ends up dying as a worshiper of the devil, not, not a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very, very sad video. It demonstrates how cunning the Iblis can be or Shaitan can be. And it's, I'm really left speechless. Um, another thing to take from this video is the fact that sometimes we're easily influenced to do the wrong things. We're coming from homes where there's morals, there's respect, there's all sorts of things. But when we go out there into the world, we want to try things that we know are not good for us. We want to try things even though we know back home don't appreciate them. We want to try things knowing that we're disrespecting people. We want to try things knowing that they're bad. It just takes a bit of sweet talk to persuade someone. And it takes a lot of courage to resist something. It's like, oh, let's go drink. Um, no thanks. I don't need to. It really takes... Um, you really have to have the will of actually saying, you know what, this is not for me. Otherwise, <clears throat> this was very, very sad. If you guys want to comment on anything in this video, feel free. What you learned from this, what you're taking from this, or what you think should have been in this, let us know in the comment section below. And we'll be more than glad to read your comments. Just remember to be kind. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.